Good evening to the Brookfield Selectman's uh, meeting of uh, September 10th, 2019. Would you like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? Go, go there again. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the following warrants. A payroll warrant for 828.19 for $154,633.63. A payroll warrant for seven nineteen nineteen for one thousand four hundred and nine dollars and ninety four cents. A payroll warrant for nine four nineteen for three thousand sixty four dollars and eighty cents. Another. It's a minus. It's a negative. Oh, it's a yeah. negative. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that. And uh, now we have another payroll warrant for nine. Four nineteen for three thousand seven hundred and eighty six dollars and sixty cents. A payroll warrant from nine eleven nineteen for one hundred seventy six thousand five hundred seventy one dollars and eight cents. An expense warrant for nine ten nineteen for four hundred seventy six dollars and twenty two cents. An expense warrant for nine ten nineteen. For $201,121.71. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I have some uh, minutes of uh, department uh, reports to, to Pat. I would like approval for those. So, motion to motion accept to, the to selections accept. minutes and approve the reports. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have fire department reports from July and August for 2019 and EMS for August 2019. Motion to approve. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and on the one from the fire department, we have anniversaries. Uh, maybe Peter can help me with the last name here for the firefighter Raymond Ranalone. Ran 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 He's. Uh, his anniversary was 720. He's been with us for 20 years. Congratulations, Congratulations. to him. Awesome. And then we also have another anniversary uh, with uh, Jeff White, who's a lieutenant, for 830 for 15 years of service. I'd like to congratulate the both of them and hope that they stay with us for many more years. Yes. There's an EMS one, too. I think there's an EMS. Was there an EMS one? Yes. Firefighter. No, I don't think so, Karen. It was just these. No, just those two. Firefighter. Oh, another one. Another paramedic. I'm sorry, paramedic. Ashley Marks for 821. And she was here with us for seven years. So I'd like to congratulate her, too, for her Perfect. volunteerism. Great. Okay. Now our next thing on our agenda is we have a fire department grant award. And if Peter would probably like to come up and speak on that. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, as their practice, we received a phone call on Thursday from somebody from Senator Markey's office, just giving us a heads up about it. And then on Friday, we were officially notified that from the last grant cycle through Department of Homeland Security, through FEMA, a program called the Assistance for Firefighter Grants, AFGs, that one of the grants that we had submitted last calendar year had, had been approved. Uh, this program has been going on almost 20 years, I believe, and this is our third such grant. We got one for a communications overhaul many years ago, and one for a thermal imager. This is the largest. Uh, the amount that we'll be getting from the federal government uh, won't exceed $133,561.90. Uh, the total project is $140,240. 
they require, based on the size of our community, a 5% match, which comes up to $6,678.10. Um, internally, being this early in the fiscal year, and concerning that this will take care of some things I would have had to do otherwise, some testing, some replacement. My plan is to deal with that reimbursement in budget right now, and if something falls short, we've still got a lot of fiscal 20 to go. There's no point in you know, rating other accounts, and anything as stable, if not stabilization, but reserve or anything of that point at this time. Yeah, you think if you can have, handle it with your operational if, if budget, and if there's, it now, if there's something if short, there's something, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. Um, Did we set aside at the annual some money that overlaps with this that could there was also money be used? set aside for protective clothing and air bottle replacement. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, we won't have to replace air bottles because we're getting brand new air bottles. Uh, so, understood, but would it make sense to fund a portion of your 6600 from that from that money if you're concerned we actually it would could, cause, yeah. cause you a budgetary shortfall? I could look at the number of just to not run afoul of the language and exactly. the will of the people. I could see how many bottles we would have had replaced in fiscal 20, and I could take that number and I think with the accountant's permission, yeah, I don't I don't really see it as an issue. We're replacing air bottles, we're just doing it for five cents on the dollar. So well, exactly. Well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is so that, I think, is that, I, a, I, I think that might that. be an it, opportunity. It does follow the scope of it, but not as specific as the will of it. Uh, the way it was written and what was approved, because they do spell it out, this will allow us to buy 18 self-contained breathing apparatus, air packs. And the the federal government defines air pack as the, the backpack, the regulator, the hoses, et cetera. Um, a bottle, a spare bottle, air tank, so a total of 36 air tanks, and a mask, the face mask breathing apparatus with what they call voice amplifier. Um, when you're talking with this over so this actually allows you to speak more normally into a radio in addition the industry standard now is to issue individual masks to people so they have their own masks that they take care of the 18 that will come with the packs will stay on the trucks just in case something happens we have those but we'll be getting 20 additional masks for, to equip 20 firefighters with their own individual mask and those also have voice amplifiers and the federal government actually specifies that Okay, your, your air pack with two bottles shouldn't exceed $7,000 per item. They've got it all budgeted out based on the request. Uh, they looked at our num the numbers that were submitted for the items, not so much the cost. They look at market and in area of the country and as to what they can do. It used to be that you either got all or none. Now they say, well, this is what you asked for in terms of equipment and money. We'll give you the equipment, but you can do better on money. Both these items are covered under state competitive bid listings. So we're going to be evaluating in the next couple of weeks with vendors, mm -hmm. just for due diligence, and it's going to be mostly the rank and file. I don't wear them, so I really don't have the, I don't want to say the right to make the final, uh, I'll make the final decision, but not every decision about mm -hmm. it. The, the firefighters and the officers themselves will evaluate them. We haven't bought a new air pack in several years, and many, and that was part of the, the way the program works, their PACs are regulated by the National Fire Protection Association who gets together every three years and sets and updates standards for this equipment. And you receive points in your favor depending on how well the PACs were. And the goal of the federal government with this grant in the last few years is to replace all air PACs that were more than two cycles out of compliance. Well, we had some PACs that were four cycles out of compliance. And those are questions very pointed in the application. So. So it was written, a lot of it, the information, they look at call volume, they look at the entire uh, perspective of the, of the department, the fleet, everything. Um, types of calls we've done over the last three years. Um, I wrote it up, I had a couple of my members review it internally. The coordinator, retired fire chief by the name of David Parr, who works for the FEMA, said, have somebody else read it. If you're an author, you don't usually see your own mistakes. <coughs> so my guys were able to look at it look at a couple things. Uh, Kathy LaRocca mm -hmm. read it. She was very blunt right up to She says, I don't know anything about airbags. I don't need you to know about airbags, but if I'm spelling something wrong the entire time, you know, <laughs> if it's there, there, or there, then it's going to look kind of silly. 
So you know, Kathy was very good. And we've been optimistic every every time I've seen Kathy in the last few months. You heard, you heard, you heard. So yeah, just the fact you hadn't heard was probably well, good because it meant that they hadn't said no yet. So. Yeah. I had talked to Kathy today about it, and she complimented you. She said you did most of the work on it because she says that Peter's been doing this for so many years. She says I really didn't do anything. On but it. it was important. And I liked having because they even encouraged uh, the coordinate chief part. He said when he wrote grants. His proofreader was his wife, yeah. who knew nothing about the fire service mm -hmm. other than that she was married to a fire chief. But she would find, you know, you're, I know what you're trying to say, but you're not saying it. That was yeah. the type of thing. And Kathy caught a couple of those with me. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been accused since, I think, third grade of run-on sentences. So between her <laughs> and my good. guys, we caught that. So, so congratulations. Great. Thank Peter. you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Good oh, teamwork. Excellent. So yes. we should, the award and everything, I'll, I can keep this up to speed. It's going to be a couple weeks, but I'd say by the time the leaves are down, we this will be well underway. So. Great. Good. Excellent. Okay. That's great. Have a good time. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Our next one is to sign an OBRA contribution plant changes. They this is um, if people don't work 20 hours a week, they get involved with this OBRA. And what it is, it's some interest changes on it. Motion, motion to sign. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you want to ask uh, I was going to second for, for oh, some, a little bit of discussion. So with the OBRA, is there any options other than the fixed type of account that they are, or is that is that basically the state regulation that that's the only type of interest-bearing account it can be? Do you know? Well, I know that that is the only one, but what happened is the rate went down. Right. Yeah, but this is no state. Say that again. So I was wondering, is there, if the, is there any way for people to select a different type of investment no. to place those funds? No, in? they hit no. If you work under twenty hours a week, you have to be involved with OBRA. Okay. But if hmm? through nationwide, yeah, through nation, it's through nationwide. Okay. And people can also, if people even do have a reti other retirement account, you know, like the original retirement, if you want to um, have another one, you can get involved with this. Okay. Okay, so um, we do need to take a vote, though. Yeah, take the vote. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The appointment, I had one appointment and then there was another one because Mike gave me a, a piece of paper and wanted to be appointed tonight. Okay. So, decided if I wanted to do that. Okay, too. well, we have some appointments here. One is for Kathy LaRocca to be the ADA coordinator. I appointed to that position. Yep. To be appointed. Uh -oh. And this would be from June till June 30th of 2020. Yep. I'd like to have a motion. Motion to sign. Yeah, Second. Exactly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great person. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then um, Mike Siri would like to be appointed to the CIPC. And there was a resignation which we'll get later on. The there was a resignation. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint Mike motion to Siri. For June till June 30th, 2020. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, I do have a question. Actually, oh, probably should, I should have asked before we took the vote. Have do we have anybody else that's expressed an interest in it? Well, and and have we I, in essence posted the vacancy before no, we add them on? What happened is um, Mike received the resignation, and then right before I was getting ready to leave. 
<clears throat> you asked to be appointed, and I didn't have time to really <coughs> reach out to you folks, so I figured I'd put it okay. out, and you guys could decide here. So, no, it hasn't so, been posted. The resignation just came in today. So, so I'll, I would prefer that you register my vote as no, because I think it would be what would be appropriate is to just let the community know that the no. vacancy exists. I think there is already another <coughs> vacancy on that committee, isn't there anyway? I have no idea. And I know they've. Yeah, I think there's a vacancy anyway. Okay. So, but I mean, it's still two to one, but I'm just saying is that I think it would be more appropriate, particularly where he's a town employee and, and he has knowledge of this, the, the position and nobody else necessarily does. I think what would have been more appropriate would be to go ahead and at least let the community know that, that it's available as an opportunity because he's our town clerk, he's on the cemetery commission, he's our parking hearing officer, he's on the board of health. Nothing stops him from being on the CIPC, but I, I just see it as being something that it would be more appropriate to see if there's anybody that would be interested in getting involved. But, you know, it's so, still two to one, even if I pull my vote back and say no. Yeah. Okay. Did you say that this, that was the only two? Our next one is to establish a commission on disability. Motion to form a committee, yes. on a commission on disability. Second, but let's <coughs> talk through Any it. Any discussion on this? Yeah. Explain it. Okay. So, so because of the grant and the ADA, ADA compliance, we need a commission that relates to the two disabilities. And so it's, we don't have to form it and have yeah. people appointed to it, but we have to have this body um, create the commission yeah. so that we can, in fact, appoint. Don't we have to vote it at a town meeting according to Mass General Law? That was my reading of the information that was no. sent to us, is that we need to put this, it in. This came from, from Kathy. Kathy asked, me, Kathy asked me to ask the Board of Selectmen. She said all you have yeah. to do is it, they it, just have to vote to establish, establish the commission it. outlet okay. and eligibility. She didn't say anything about town no. meeting, and I know she yeah. read through it. You pretty thoroughly <coughs> I had read the email I had read the email earlier and I, I, yeah. I kind of got the impression that it, it would be that that usually it's formed by you know adding that the same way like the CIPC mm -hmm. is in by bylaw so I think I think what we can do is I think we can charter and and, and yeah, form well, a committee but I think long term it's probably would be best yeah. to also add it to our bylaws yeah. one of the standing yeah. yes so committees. tonight all that Kathy is just asking us to do is to, to um, have a commission on it. That's all she wants us to do. We and she can follow up. And she can and she can follow. Up. We'll have her follow follow up on that. Yeah, I just want to make certain that in, we. In the we, email, I think there was basically something that it, was sort of a charter. It, it, it is sort of a charter. It gave some pretty. Um, it, it looked like it gave some pretty deep details about the requirements, and it did look it, like it referenced some form of mass here, general law says, that says that the town needs to a, mm -hmm. adopt. And usually, when a town needs to adopt. It well, let me see. Vote. It says right here, commissions consist, is, consist of no less than five and no more of nine, chosen by the Board of Selectmen or Town Manager. Um, the majority must be persons with disabilities, and one may be a member of the immediate family of a person with a disability. In addition, one member must be elected or appointed municipal official. And it says down here that the Board of Selectmen are to appoint a minimum of five members to serve on this board. Members are appointed to serve three-year terms. And uh, right here also it says uh, something wrong. So the Town of Brookfield has not created a formal commission. Commissions on disability are established by a vote of town meeting to promote the in inclusion and integration of persons and disabilities in the activities, services, and employment opportunities of the community on Mass General Law 40, Section 8J, gives municipality, municipalities the authority to establish commissions on disabilities. So we say yes tonight. Yep. We go to town meeting. Yep. And that's Whatever what we'll the do. next town meeting is. Yeah, and I think in the interim, we could we could we could form a committee with the intent to transition yeah. it to a commission if the town meeting. Yeah. If that's the will of the town so, meeting. So determined. Yeah, if that's so determined. But I think I think within our authority, we can stand up a committee for it, mm -hmm. and we could ask that, and we could try to start staffing it with people that meet the requirements of the commission yeah. once the commission is formed. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Just need to establish it tonight. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And so, Kathy, so and Kathy looks. And then we'll yeah, and we and we could charter the committee. We just right. would have to put it on the the town meeting to to get the commission in place. Well, and the, the key here is that she's looking for ADA grants, yes, and we have absolutely. to have a commission or committee mm -hmm. to be in place to be able to apply. Right. So, right. I think we've handled it. We're all set on that. Okay, the next one is to sign a municipal transfer uh, from Should the board. explain what happened? Yeah, if you'd like to. What happened is, it, and Steve Gillis knows this, when we go to uh, do our budget, Board of Southern's budget, the insurance is, the general insurance is in our budget. And we went to um, our insurance agent and asked him what we should, what figure we should use. And he allowed um, somewhat of an increase, not much, but he gave us a figure, an exact figure, which is what we went back to the advisory board to, and which is what we received. Well, I was very surprised when I received um, three bills and couldn't pay the last one because there wasn't enough money because he underestimated by about $9,500. So I called him up and spoke with him, and he said, well, he said he didn't anticipate it, but due to all the wind damage, the hurricanes, mm -hmm. tornadoes, etc., that there was a, a, it had nothing to do with anything in the house or anything to do with us. It was just overall there was a hike in the insurance radiance. rates. And I had to ask him to put it in an email so you'd have it in writing, which is attached to that. So when you say that we received three bills, do we do we pay the full year up front, but like in, in yeah, three well, installments? Well, insurance, or what is we do because it's um, injured on duty, and then the Trident, which is the Argonaut insurance, and then there's one more that we pay. Okay, so it's three separate policies we pay annually up yes. front, and we have a shortfall of $9,500. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. All right, so it's a it's an industry uptick, yep. and there's not a lot of options, actually, with municipal insurance, so. So motion to sign. Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next one here is some to sign grant amendments. This is a grant here. Uh, it was oh, it was on the abandoned houses, and Mike, Mike had first the demo. Mike had first gotten uh, two thousand seven hundred dollars, and now it was increased to four thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars. So 50% of the demolition uh, of the blighted properties were already done. So I guess he's just going to take and put this in the budget for if he has more. We have more. We have more. <clears throat> so now I that I know that, and when things freeze up, I know exactly where we can go spend it. <laughs> so I have a motion that I can. Sign oh yes, it. motion to sign. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. So we've got uh, the garage on Minnesota bid. Let's see yep. if that goes away, and then the the race, the roller rink will be next. We'll get that place cleaned up yet. Yeah, inch by inch. Yeah. Actually, I'll speak to Ryan about that. Okay, and also here we have another one to sign. This is from um, 
from the CDBG grant, and it's the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development recently approved the town's request to amend its 2017 CDBG grant to add two additional activities to utilize un unextended grant funds prior to the grant's closing on December 31st, 2019. And, uh, and it said the one, and it said these activities include housing rehabilitation and engineering design for the future cleanup of 15 Post Road. Great. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And they talked about being able to get everything done. So that's great. Yeah, what's good about that is that they just, they did such an efficient job executing on the core portion of the grant that, okay. that we've got the funds to continue on. Yeah. Something else. Another one here. This is to sign grant amendments. CBDG. Yes, yeah, CBDG. And this is on the Hayden and Hyde property. It, it, it's an invoice for 2018 invoice. Okay. So that's just okay. So I'd like to a motion to uh, sign this grant. Motion to sign the grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So just myself. It looks like the, that work's moving a pace there. Yeah, looks great. Right now it's tore, yeah, it's right now it's tore up, but it'll look great when they're done. Yeah, it's another one. Same. Engineer for the same. Yeah, for the same, same thing. For the same project. So all three of us have to sign this one, and we all three have to sign this one. Because this is by owner, approved by owner, town of Brookfield. Hmm? Just the one page. Oh, it was? Or what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I need to get the other page as oh, well. Okay. This one said it didn't make any sense because usually there's a couple of places. I need to get Linda. Yeah. On this one, there's only one place to sign. Yeah. All right. So, the, okay. So, that's that. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So, you need yeah. to sign that one. Okay. And there's only just that one to sign, each of you there. Spending somebody else's money. <laughs> well, or it's ours come back to us, one or the it's, other. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Okay, and then we have a resignation. Actually, Kentucky here. Sp spends our money. <laughs> exactly. We do. I resign. He says to all concerned, I resign from my position on the CIPC Capital Planning Interest Committee uh, Commission, effective immediately. Sean Mulligan. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then. Hey, is this the one under other, Karen? It's nothing under other. Nothing under other. Either of you? The correspondence is the triple E. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk triple E. And then, if I could just bring up, I'm sorry, I, I know I didn't mention announcements tonight. Um, we'll put that under other. The Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry is accepting donations at the Merrick Public Library. 
library whenever the library is open are at St. Mary's Church, 4 Howard Street, during distribution hours, Wednesday 9.30 to 11 a.m. and Saturday 9.30 to 11 a.m. Okay, so the next one here is the... This, the next one is on the Triple E virus update. And um, Michael, Mike Seri, who is on the Board of Health, wanted us to share this. Uh, please share this update with the Board of Selectmen. The Mass Department of Public Health will not be recommending more aerial spraying for the remainder of this year. The Board of Health did discuss making it a priority that all horses in town be vaccinated for the EE virus. However, this is not something that is supported by the Department of P Public Health. And uh, he also had a discussion with Clarence regarding the possibility of our community joining other towns for annual spraying. I did not discuss this with the board last night, but suppose it is an option for us to explore. According to Clarence, the cost would be around 30000 annually. Right. And you would like to add to so, this? So let me add to this. I will be providing about an eight-page document to the Board of Health through Mike tomorrow, because they're not here tonight. <clears throat> with, a, with a, a different set of information. So that there will be aerial, aerial spraying, and aerial spraying will go as far as Charlton and Dudley, Leicester, um, Auburn, and the like. So there will be aerial spraying next week. We're not on the list. Uh, one of the questions I'll be asking Mike is, were we requ requested or because of the, um, uh, the finding in the town of Tripoli in a horse, um, that uh, were we considered or were, was there any correspondence. As it relates to the uh, mosquito control program, it's beyond spraying. Mm -hmm. It's an education, par partly an education program where people are informed to not have standing water and those kinds of things and where Brookfield has so much water yeah. and some of it standing that we need to be really cautious and we need to be aware and we need to take action. It said that we have a five-year-old in the hospital in critical condition with, with the effects of Triple E. Not fortunately, not in the town of Brookfield, but someone that's that's affected by yes. it. So, I what I, what I, I'm proposing to the Board of Health is they seriously consider bringing the material, the mosquito control program, before the, the next town annual town meeting, where we can in fact talk about funding it. And again, I would stress that it goes beyond spraying. But at least we might be more prepared next year yes. than we are this year. So, anyway, that's my right. thought. And, and, yes. and the other thing is, it's not necessarily mandated, but it certainly makes a lot of sense for horse owners, and we have a lot of yes. them in town to go ahead and vaccinate their animals, right? Right, and boost and graft and boosted, shot. and you can boost, and many did. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing. And I would support anything. Uh, 100% support it at the annual town meeting because we do, we need to do something about this. Yep, yep. Be, be at least on the front end of it. Yep, that's a good idea. Okay, our next one is it's a flood risk meeting by FEMA, and um, the time is uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon on September 26, 2019, at the McKinnon Council Chambers, Southbridge Town Hall. 41 Elm Street, Southbridge, Mass. Did Ryan and Cindy get a copy of that, Karen? Of um, uh, uh, the, the FEMA meeting? I, I will send it to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what that my schedule just is. just came in yesterday, I think so. Yeah, let's just yeah, make that sure. And actually make sure Peter got it because he's the yeah. FEMA yeah. Yeah. Yep. coordinator as well. Were they looking for a participant from the select board, or is it just more for informational for the towns to offer to send somebody? Information, I think. Just, just an informational meeting. Yeah. It got, it went to quite a few in the town. Okay. Yeah, Jeff. Did it go to Ryan and Peter? Uh, yes, Jeff Taylor got one. Sharon, Peter. Yeah. Peter got one. Cindy. Okay, great. Oh, great. Yeah. So they all got, they all got good, it. Good. Everybody Excellent. got one. Okay, the next one is from Chatter about um, some increases in service. Spectrum TV Select will increase by $7.50. Spectrum TV Silva will increase by $7.50. And Spectrum TV Gold will increase by $7.50. Mm -hmm. 
And now this is another one. Uh, we received this from, I saw this the, the other day. That's a request from a yeah. student. It's a request from, from a student. He's in the 2019 Division I Young Marine Unit of the Year. And his name is Aaron Zelaski. He's 16 and he's a junior at the Bartlett High School in Webster. And he would like us to get involved with Red Ribbon Week. It will take place October 23rd through the 31st. The Natchahog River Young Marines will be actively participating in this nationally recognized electric drug awareness event. You can assist us in publicizing and promoting the week by issuing a townwide proclamation that boldly declares your town's support and commitment to the fight against illegal drugs and those that use them. So we have to probably take a vote on that. A vote to support his efforts. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is there any action required on our part? Other than they're asking you to publicize it and publicize it. Just to publicize it. But then, the, yeah, there is something here. It's called proclamation, and it has to be signed. Yeah. Okay, so I can sign it, and then, then probably down here, he says, your town is Connecticut. We'll have to put Brookfield instead. Mm -hmm. Send it back to the mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We have. Do you have anything else? Nope. Um, motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, oh. Good evening. Good evening. I have a quick question. Um, about three weeks ago, we had a dead tree fall on Allen Road, caused some property damage, and the highway superintendent came out the very next day and cut the other half of the tree down because it was also dangerous. Uh, about a week later, we had another one on Allen Road that came down, fell parallel to Allen Road, pretty significant size tree, but it didn't do any property damage. I stopped today to talk with Ryan to ask him if he has heard anything from National Grid on when they may be coming out to take care of the dead trees. I had also asked him this about six months ago and he said he was waiting to hear. Basically today he told me that they're not even returning his phone calls. He can't even get through. He's mentioned that there are 65 dangerous dead trees on Allen Road alone. Um, we've had two of them fall okay. down in the last Who three weeks. I don't know if there is any help that you can give yeah, Ryan fine. or if you have a number or if you can reach out to Ann Gobi or somebody. Okay. Once we get some snow on these trees, and these are basically all the result of, you know, the gypsy moth infestation. From last year. I got 21 on my property alone. Yep. And, and I, I get to pay the bill. Yep. And we've got, uh, we, the people on Lane 21 approached um, a tree company uh, this week. Uh, we probably have 40 trees to okay. take down. And that's not, that's, two, two of them have already been flagged by National Grid. But again, I've tried to call them and all I do is get on their, you know, there'll be a 15 minute wait. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if there's another number or if you can look into it or if there's anything I you can do to. Isn't there a lady that lives here in that town because I can sit there on my commute she's in the morning she's, um, and <laughs> get through. I get it off of my bill. Okay. It's, it's oh, the phone one. number oh, the on the bill and okay. it just, yeah. you know, there's a 15 minute and wait and then it, they just never come back. So. Ryan said that he has the name of the woman who was in charge of Arborist for National Grid. Now, I don't know whether you can reach out to her or whether somebody else Look, could. We have a woman that lives on um, Long Hill Road that we have contacted before with other things that we've needed. The and double so poles. The double poles. And her. so Karen said that she can try to call her and see if she can get any response out of it. Don't even know if she still works. We don't. Grid, but, but she's going to have her number. Yeah, so we do have her number. Okay. And maybe she can help us out and tell us who to get in touch with. Well, they also have um, 
what's the fellow's name that was on the solar committee? He worked for National Tim Rowan. Grid. Tim. Tim Rowan. Rowan. Yeah, he yeah. might be able to help. <laughs> and and I'm, I mentioned Alan Road only because I talked with Ryan about it this morning, and I'm sure. Yeah, and his list is a, a big chunk of his list is Alan Road. Okay. I mean, there is more other places. Oh, in town, absolutely. Right. Oh, yeah. But but a big population of the trees right now is concentrated yeah. there. Okay. Just so. And the wind blew up the hill, and I've got the 21 at the top of there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Unfortunately. So I don't know if you can help him or, uh, out at okay. all. It would be appreciated. Okay. Thanks. Ken, did you have Ken, did you have something? Mr. Jones and I foiled a plan yesterday for another solar farm on Route 148. Hey, could you come up? Can't, yeah, come on. Come on. Mr. Al Jones, in the office there. A fellow came from Maine that him and his partner wanted to buy the lots up on Route 148, the six lots that have been there for eight years, and he wanted to put a solar farm in. So we kind of told him, well, it's, all, it's wet. How much would it cost? Just go back to Maine. It can't do it there. Um, he was he was going after his application. I says, well, as far as I know, I think we still have a moratorium on the solar farms. No, we don't. Okay. No. So at the yes. last town meeting, we uh, voted in our solar bylaw and all of the all of the specifics surrounding solar installations are are very strictly delineated within the the, the town bylaw. So uh, we do not currently have a moratorium. Yeah. Is that the property on um, 148? There's so maybe only one house down there. It's on the left. No, the, 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 right. the six lots that are just before uh, Colette's house. Oh, okay. On the right hand side with the little stream coming down along it. Okay. And uh, he had he had plans of taking digging the wetland out, running the pipe along the road. I goes, that ain't gonna work. It. Okay. <laughs> Good news. It's um, that's the second one. So. They're coming here and, oh, I noticed on my Google map that you have a lot of big spaces. <clears throat> well, they're not for sale right now, so go back to Maine. Good, sorry. Good. Thank so you, Kenny. Try to be so nice. we are all set. Steve, were you here with anything? Nothing. Just uh, here to uh, observe. Thank you. Good. So okay. with that, I well, would motion to adjourn. I will second, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Out of town.